realistic fact of life that soccer is more than just a game. In Serbia, it's more like a war. This isn't a political rap. These aren't protesters. They're soccer fans. And at least once a year, these men and thousands more like them turn the streets of Belgrade into ground zero for one of the most intense rivalries in the world. We sent Ben Ferguson to the Serbian capital, where the long-standing rivalry game between the country's two best soccer teams has earned a reputation and a name of its own. The Eternal Derby. Serbia. Behind us is its capital, Belgrade, the home of Serbia's two biggest football teams, Partizan and Red Star. When the two come together, it's known as the Eternal Derby. Red Star and Partizan were formed in Belgrade in 1945. For decades, the teams have battled not only on the field, but also in the stands. The Eternal Derby sustained the fall of communism and a brutal civil war that ripped the region apart, and is still Serbia's most heated sporting event today. But unlike many other rivalries around the world, there is no visible reason or ideology to explain the divide between Red Star and Partizan. And with the stadiums just minutes apart, fans have no clear lines for allegiance other than being raised as a fan of one side or the other. And what we're trying to find out from supporters and people surrounding the event is why this rivalry is so fierce. In Serbia, football teams are owned by the state. So we've come to meet the Secretary of State for Sport to find out about the culture of sport here, as well as the culture of rivalry. Red Star versus Partizan. It's become known as the Eternal Derby. How did it become to be so fierce? To rivalry is a way of life in Serbia. When you play a sport, you play only the stars and Partizan. We are a nation who wants to stop it. Sigurno da u tom momentu najmasovnije dva kluba kad su nastajala su postijali odbiljni partnerija, bili su ili rivalija, bili su na bukvalno 500 metara na drugog. One of the reasons as well why this derby has become so well known internationally is because there is quite often elements of violence at the game. Pa sigurno da su mi zadnje 25-30 godina, 25 godina imali dokonu dosta problema kod nas. Vi znate da se stara država raspadala, da je bilo mnogo ratova u okruženju. Sigurno to nosi sve neke posljedice, možda i velike posljedice. In the 1980s, amidst the crumbling of the Soviet Union, a wave of hypernationalism fractured the six republics of communist Yugoslavia. Among those six territories was the country we now know today as Serbia. This division soon devolved into hostility as the new Serbian president, Slobodan Milosevic, began to militarize within the other former republics of Yugoslavia. President Milosevic's decision to send armed troops to the borders of the seceding republics would incite civil war and begin the bloodiest European conflict since World War II. The three years that followed were marked by the genocide of thousands of Slavic Muslims in the region at the hands of Serbian forces. Thousands of ethnic Serbs within Bosnia also died. Finally, in the summer of 1995, NATO troops lay siege to the region with a full month of bombings, 
and secured a peace settlement that recognized the six former republics of Yugoslavia as independent nations. Kada smo mi u jednom momentu na tri četiri generacije koje su da kažem u vreme inflacije, krize, ratova, a, sigurno da, da, da ima tih pos, veliki posljed. Sigurno da je to jedan da kažem, taj derbi možda bio trebao da bude startovi paraže, da, 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 da dolaze ljudi koji su da kažem problema, da jednostavno tu negativni nervi izbace, ali mnoge stvari su tim momentima nisu mogli da se kontrolišu i tako se desilo to što se desilo da sad imamo derbi koji da kažem pod iskim rizikom. Svaki derbi je specifičan na svoj način. Svi ljudi znaju da je ovo najbitnija utakmica u, u, u našem futbolu. Sigurno je da sam odigrao ja kao kapitan puno derbija, mislim oko 25. Da već kad smo oko toga, oko tog derbija koji je 2000. godine prekinut, ja sam bio aktor tog derbija i to je možda jedan od redkih derbija koji bi ja želio da zaboravim. Sasha's feelings about the 2000 derby are warranted. Just 10 days after the overthrow of the Milosevic regime, Partizan and Red Star played a match that spiraled into full-scale riots within 30 minutes of kickoff. Five years removed from the civil war that tore Yugoslavia apart, the political turmoil and civil unrest once again spilled onto the field. Moments after pleading with his own fans to be peaceful, Sasha was attacked and beaten, and the game was cancelled. Nearly every corner of Belgrade bears a reminder of the country's tumultuous recent history. Since then, economic hardships have persisted. And today, the youth unemployment rate in Serbia has spiraled to a staggering 42.5%. And for the young people here, who've inherited a life of daily struggle, the eternal derby gives a rare opportunity to belong to either Red Star or Partizan. So we're walking into Red Star's training ground right now. As a Red Star player, when you get to the bottom of the tunnel, the first thing that faces you is the partisan supporters. But then as you step a little further out, you've got the most hardcore of your own fans, the ultras, who'll be screaming you on in a way that must, as a player, just be indescribable. The most powerful groups surrounding the derby are the fan firms on either side of the rivalry, known as ultras. They lead non-stop chants during the games, orchestrate violence against opposing fans, and skim profits from their club's merchandise and concessions. Even after repeated clashes in the stands and disruption of games, very little has been done to stop their influence. Partizan's ultra fan group are known as the Grobari, Serbian for undertakers. With thousands of young men in their ranks, they've grown highly organized. Though they have no official management over the team, the Grobari use intimidation to wield significant influence within the organization. In a rare meeting, the leaders of the Grobari agreed to talk with us inside the Partizan Stadium, using their personal set of keys to gain access to the ground. We like to say for ourselves that we are a black sheep from the society, real rebellions, and uh, all the others are mainstream. We don't like mainstream in any form. In any form, we are discussed we just want to tell our story to the world, to the people in Serbia, that we are the best. And uh, we're going to fight for the name of Grobari, for the name of Partizan, no matter how, how, how many of them are there. Do you stand for something different to what Red Star stand for? Još ta razlika koja između nas i njih 
je ta što se mi vodimo time principom viteštva nekog. Znači imamo čas, kodeks, čast, kodekse, ponašanja i razume njih. And this Saturday you're playing not in this stadium, but you're playing in Redstone Stadium. Does that mean that your preparation has to be different? Principu, dogovori se stvaraju sedam dana pre derbija, od prilike i kao vojska, kao hierarhija postoji. Kod nas pripreme uobičajeno, to jest funkcionišemo kao na tribini, kod nas i svi funkcionišemo kao jedna vojska. Pošto je i odatle se dalje. Can you give me any idea of what I can expect on Saturday? Očekivanje će videti. Would you be prepared to die for your club? Yes, yes. We're at the highest point in Belgrade up here. In the distance, you can see Partizan Stadium and Red Star Stadium. You know, in this enormous city, they've chosen to build both of them about 400 meters away from each other. The outspoken leader of Red Star's ultra fan group is Ivan Bogdanov, better known as Ivan the Terrible. Bogdanov is as much a right-wing political dissenter as a football fan, and he's widely feared with a reputation as an inciter of anarchic violence, both on the pitch and off. Ivan the Terrible and the Red Star Ultras took the national stage after stoking a riot that ended the Serbian national team's World Cup qualifier in 2012. Within just seven minutes of kickoff, Serbia was forced to forfeit the match, dashing their World Cup hopes. Repeated stints in prison for hooligan-related violence have done nothing to lessen Bogdanov's influence, and he remains a hero in Red Star's North Stand. Despite our repeated requests, Bogdanov and the Red Star Ultras declined to speak with us for this piece. This year's eternal derby comes with particularly high stakes. Partizan either needs a win or a tie to finish their season as league champions. Red Star needs a win to keep their season alive. Do your players feel the, the intensity of this rivalry? Mi radimo to po nedelje, pričamo, no stop govorimo, pričamo i o taktici, radimo to u taktičkom planu, tako da jedan igrač crvene zvezde ne može se pretvara, svaki igrač crvene zvezde zna da ako treba da pusti krv, pustit će krv za pobjedu crvene zvezde. police headquarters as officers here prepare for one of the busiest days of their year. This is a massive public order event for them as 50,000 rival football fans from all over former Yugoslavia come to the city for one of the biggest derbies in the world. How many police officers do you have outside on the street? Uh, this is uh, top secret information, you know, but uh, we have enough. Enough? Enough for this, this part event. Last, last year, how many arrests were made on this day? About 150. 150? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we think it's not be any problem. So you're confident okay. that there won't be any problems yes, today? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I mean, even this far in front, my adrenaline is pumping like mad. There are thousands of partisan fans marching this way. They're chanting things like kill the gypsies. Um, but their clapping is becoming much more organized. Occasionally they'll stop, regroup, go quiet, and then someone on the tunnel will say, right, start again, and they'll and just go out of nowhere.
match hasn't even started yet, and at the end of that Godbari march into the stadium, a massive fight kicked off. God knows what was going on. Flares were being thrown, fireworks were going off, and they haven't even met the opposing team yet or the opposing supporters. That was just against the police, and it seemed to be against themselves a little bit. That atmosphere is so tense. Already here, you can hear it. It's getting louder and louder. For the players, this must be unbelievably intimidating. As you kind of, the further down you get, the more the echo just hits you. with their rivals on the other side of the stadium. The Red Star fans found themselves blocked in and quickly turned their aggression from the Grobari onto the police. Half the stadium has now been torn apart because they were throwing the chairs at the police for so long. I saw some serious violence there. But somehow, it all came to a head. People seem to have tired themselves out. And now the game can finally start. The hour-long riot was just a warm-up. Both fan firms snapped into mass choreography with even more energy than when they entered. The stadium was hot, simmering as if it would boil over once more. But 
but strangely, it was as if the mounting tension in the stands had little, almost nothing to do with the game that was being played on the pitch. This eternal derby, like the 147 played before it, felt like more than a competition between two football teams. It felt like theatre, like a stage. Police and firefighters were on hand at the stadium, but did little to stop the fans lobbing flares and fireworks into the sky, as if they knew this spectacle was just far beyond their control. That was amazing just then. Out of nowhere, the entire partisan stand, they brought out their flares let off so much smoke which just covered the pitch the game had to stop for five minutes all the players left the bangers were being thrown down i knew they had something in them on the pitch players were deadlocked in a tense game that was repeatedly forced to pause both partisan and red star struggled to gain an advantage in a game that seemed destined to end scoreless in spite of the outpouring of violence at these games, the derby persists. Like its name suggests, it's eternal. It's one of the only constants in a country ravaged by violent change. It's become an outlet for young men with a fractured national identity and hopeless economy, leaving them searching for meaning through rival. So the game might have ended nil Red Star fans, they've all gone. That side of the stadium is empty. But this one is still pretty full. Even with the match ending scoreless, a tie was all partisan needed to celebrate the end of their season as league champions. After the events of this year's derby, officials threatened to cancel all remaining games at Red Star Stadium, but never followed through. Violence around the rivalry has become accepted here, a part of life that faces very little backlash. Our function is that we are still here. We change years, we are older, but we are still here.